good evening all of you greetings to you all in our lord's holy name uh, we are back uh, to our thematic study this is the second last week and we are at the end of this week's study uh, so as we all know we are going to study about balanced christian today uh, very excited and happy for this study uh, we have fiorsen with us she'll pray and open today's session over to fiorsen yes sir let's pray loving lord our gracious father thank you for giving us this beautiful day and also for a very great opportunity this evening lord to meditate on your word on uh, how to lead a balanced christian life lord uh, please open all our hearts and lord set our minds right so that today we'll be able to learn many things for life and put them into practice lord father help us to set our priorities right in all the areas of our life and uh, decide properly and to lead a balanced christian life lord uh, pleasing to you uh, lord i commit billy uncle into your most precious hands let's speak to us through uncle lord thank you for leading him so far and lord use him more and more for your sake in the days to come and also lord thanking you for all those who joined and are yet to join may each of us be benefited and enlightened by your word lord I commit each and every second of today's study into your mighty hands, Lord. You take control. This we ask in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much, Fiorsen. So, as usual, uh, we'll watch a video on today's topic, something related to today's topic. Over to Westlin to play the video. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so, with no delay, we'll go to the study today. So that means we have a lot of time to discuss after the study. Hoping to hear from you. Hoping to listen to your opinions and questions. Over to Uncle. Thank you so much, uh, Vinci. And thank you, uh, Vislin. Uh, I'm excited uh, to get the help of my dear brothers and sisters who are helping us a lot in preparing for our sessions. And uh, I have to really thank Fiosin for that very meaningful prayer. How much we need to consider this important topic, being a balanced Christian. It's not only for young people, everybody needs to know that. Uh, Christian workers, we have to seriously consider this topic. At, uh, and young people, and even when you are very young in your age, in a Christian walk, if you are balanced Christian, God will make you as a very fruitful person. 
today, uh, when you are considering being a balanced person, I want to start uh, in a very different way. You might have attended many uh, uh, practical talks on balanced Christian life, how to balance your studies and ministry, how to balance your family life and ministry, how to balance your quiet time and your ministry. Like that, uh, we were talking much about it. Uh, these are all very important. Definitely, we are going to talk about it. But let me start with another important factor. I'm convinced that uh, this is very important. Our view on Christian doctrines, our beliefs, our belief system should help us in our behavior. If I have to uh, commit myself in lots and as a living sacrifice, I should know who my was sheep and I'm committing myself to God's hand. Then I need to know my God in a right way. So my understanding of Christian doctrine is very, very important. In these days, I'm sure that you will agree with me that there are some confusions, imbalanced teachings, imbalanced views on Christian doctrines are given. Too many doctrinal deviations and also too many denominational feelings. I am from church, church background. I am from this church background. And we wanted to fight as if we both are from different camps. No Christian unity or no Christian love between us, basically because of some doctrinal uh, conflict. We are not balanced Christians to love one another, to respect one another. Uh, if it is so, naturally, my uh, balance with other things also suffers. That's the way I want to start. Then secondly, I want to talk to you about our personal balancing life. What are the areas in which we need to consider? Thirdly, family life is very, very important. In our family life, if you are not going to balance uh, properly, we'll be in trouble. I see uh, many of the Christian workers, pastors are struggling because their family life is weak. Ministry, superb. When they come out, they are like angels. They are all godly people. But at home, they are devil. To, sub, to, much, to that level, I want to say. Very sad. We were talking about uh, Christian harmony in Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 to 6, 9. We were talking about it. It's for Christian workers. The harmony should be there at home. And all believers, we need to give importance to the family life, how we are balancing our time for the family. Very important talk, uh, topic. And another thing is, we have to involve in ministry. In fact, consciously I'm adding this word lead. You are a believer. You are interested in Bible study. If so, how much you have to give leadership, not like in positions, by looking at your life, people should admire. That's what we saw last week. Paul is telling to Timothy, no one should say that you are young. You should be a role model to the believers in all these areas. That's what he was telling. So in our not only Christian disciplines, even in terms of our involvement in the ministry, uh, leading others, naturally, we need to be balanced. We'll take little time to talk about it in the end of this session. For our meditation or for our support, we are going to take this passage, very powerful chapter, Romans 12th chapter. Uh, we need to take time. And by the way, after this uh, session, Vinci and others are going to ask you about your suggestions for future series, third series. One good option is we will stop it because all of us are busy. So don't disturb us with more Bible studies. We will stop it. That's a very good option. If not, if you're going to continue, you have to come out with your suggestions. One of my suggestions uh, is to have chapter study. This, this series, we studied uh, book study, Ephesians we studied. Of course, we can take one more 
a book from Old Testament and study like this, one good possibility. And another possibility is take uh, 12 uh, chapters, different chapters, and then study. I will go for Romans 12 chapter, one of the classical chapters. I'm excited to study Romans 12 chapter. Today, we are going to read two portions from that passage. I'm extremely happy. Dear Joel from Jarkent, Dunbar, he's with us. He'll be reading this passage for us. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Okay. Let us turn our Bibles to book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is professing, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Joel, for that wonderful reading. I really appreciate that. Let's start with uh, the balance Christian should have a right view on God, the triune God. Let me start with our conviction on God. As I said, what we believe will reflect in our behavior. In that way, as Paul says, I know whom I believe to Timothy. He writes 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. I know whom I believe. We as evangelicals, we as born-again believers, we have this confidence. And uh, there should not be any doubt about it. And uh, a balanced Christian will have such a strong conviction about whom God will, whom we believe. In the church and in a, in a fellowship like this, immediately we'll say that I am confident. But when we are with our friends, in our marketplace, when we are traveling, when uh, we are persecuted, when we are sidelined, when people are asking that question, how, who are you? If you are not confident enough and say that I know my God, I know my savior, then our life is not balanced. On Sunday, we are good Christians. On Monday, we are a very worldly Christian. It can happen to me and to us. We have to be careful. And I'm, uh, I want to talk many, many things about a balanced view on God. God is love and God is just. We talk much about God's love and forget about God's punishment. And God's, God is uh, just. And sometimes we wanted to talk much about God's punishment and judgment and uh, God is angry, but we forget about God is love. Can you think of a balanced view on God? Both are important. God is love. That's what the scripture says. And God is very clearly uh, exhibited as God is anger. God, God of just. One more thought. Old Testament and New Testament. We say that the uh, Old Testament God is very harsh God. And New Testament God is very soft very loving and serving like that. Oh no. When you look at Bible as a whole, as the progressive revelation of God, I and you need to have a right understanding of God of the Old Testament and God of the New Testament is the God of the Bible. 
there are people who are confusing. Take for example, Jehovah Witnesses, very much imbalanced. They say Old Testament is important, New Testament is not at all needed. And look at uh, Jesus uh, only. They talk about Jesus and New Testament. Don't talk about Old Testament at all. Possibilities are there. And charismatics, they want to keep Bible only from Acts second chapter. Before that, they are not interested. Only from Acts second chapter, we see that the spirit of God is at work. No, we need to have a real balanced view on God and view on Old Testament and New Testament. That shows that our understanding of Holy Trinity and our belief in Holy Trinity is very, very important. As a believer, do I have a right understanding of Holy Trinity is a very important question. Uh, that's, uh, I consider as a very basic question for a balanced Christian doctrine. Even about God's word. Very important, God's word. And another aspect is uh, how God acts. Not only God speaks, how God acts. In Exodus, we see that God acted in a powerful way in the history, bringing God's people away from bondage and leading them to Canaan. Wonderful. And now, as a Christian, how do I look at the act of God? I put it in subjective way. If this is not happening, oh no, where is God? The question people are asking, where is God? Where is God? As if he is dead and God, or he's not there? Very sad, very sad. We need to know how God acts. Job had a question. Even his friends were misinterpreting the understanding of God. But Job was very clear. I know my savior is uh, risen. He is a living savior. I have. And Job could realize the silence of God. My dear young friends, there will be some times you need to know the silence of God in your life. You don't have any answer, but you believe God is at work. Even being quiet, God is active in your life. Keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. Our prayers, we want to dictate terms to God. Lord, I pray you have to do like this. And we claim that I'm a child. You are my father. You have to do it. My friends, God answers. That's what we read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. If we commit ourselves to do the will of God, as we read in the Romans 12 chapter, the pleasing and the perfect will of God, if we commit ourselves, naturally, we can have a God, great confidence that God will answer our prayers. Perfect. But not in my way. Even Jesus prayed, Lord, let not my will be done. Let your will be done. So when I pray like this, my other friends say that you don't have faith. You don't have faith. Have you heard that? True. True. They say that if you have faith, you have to say that God will do it. This way I'll do it. God will do it. No, friends, you are not having a right balanced view on God. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that God will not uh, answer the way in which you prayed. But you need to be very careful. The right understanding of God acting, God answering our prayers. Above all, uh, this is a very important uh, thought. The sovereignty of God and responsibility of man. Both should go together. That we are discussing in many, many uh, Bible studies. My understanding of sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. Perfect. I believe that. And what about me? I am responsible. And hear me, that does not come in Genesis 3rd chapter. When the fall has come, God did not say that you are responsible. You be careful, fellow. Not like that. It was there in Genesis 2nd chapter itself. When God created you and me, 
God has created, that sovereign God who is a control of every situation and who is a creator, he has given man responsibility to take care of the creation, to take care of himself, to love his wife, and to lead a family life. Every responsibility was given to man and to the women. You are not a robot that God has created you and then from heaven he's uh, using a remote. Go here and there, do this and do that. No, you are not a robot. You are a man. You are a person. You are a lady. You are a person. Consider that. Consider that. So ultimately, I see one uh, important thing is I look at God in my space and in my time. In my time, I can go uh, to some extent and uh, these, I have seen my parents and grandparents and like that I'm going, going and I, I did not see my grandfather's grandfather gone. Then I'm going till Noah's time I can go. Then I can go up to Adam's time. That's all. Uh, in, when I think of eternity, my time space says, okay, a uh, thousand years will be there. After that, God will keep me in a place where I can enjoy uh, without any sin. What will happen? It may go for a thousand years or two thousand years. After that, fall will come. Because my mind is limited to time and space. But we have a God who is above our time and space. If so, how much we need to have a balanced view on God. I'm not confusing. Please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not confusing you. But my only point is, as an evangelical, be uh, assured of your beliefs and your understanding of God. He is God. Let him be God and worship him. Not in a blind faith. That's the reason Paul could say, it's not that I searched God, rather God confronted me on the way to Damascus. My life has changed. All of us have that experience. Even in our churches and in our families, there are good Christians around. But they don't have that revelation. They don't have that confidence because they haven't met God in that personal way. But you and me have this revelation graciously, which was given by God. And we need to work towards the balanced view on our Christian doctrines on God. Some more doctrines, there are many. I'm just highlighting on predestination. Ephesians chapter 1, when we studied, we saw that even before the foundations were made, God has chosen me. My God, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. How is possible? I won't stop there. I will look at my brother and sister. What happened to him and what happened to her? They were not chosen. That's the way I want to come to a conclusion. Be careful. Be careful. And talking about perfect sanctification. In this world, I will be 100% perfect. Some uh, people teach about it. Sanctification is important. I don't want to go to the other extreme. Romans 8 chapter. That's what uh, Rome, uh, Paul says to the church at Rome. Don't go to the other extreme saying that because God's grace is given, you can do anything. Hyper grace. Everything is God's grace. And I can le le lead a loose life. And uh, God will take care of me because the spirit of God is with me. He will sanctify me. So the sanctification process and grace and everything, we are confused. And we don't have a balanced uh, view on that. Even millennia, thousand years, people confuse. Some people say that already we are in the millennium. And some people say that there is no millennium at all. Jesus will come and immediately we all will be taken in rapture. Maybe in a few seconds time, we will be uh, with him eternally. And many, many teachings are there that we have looked at when we studied the book of uh, Revelation. I am not teaching here doctrines. My only point is, do you have a balanced view on Christian doctrines? We all are from such background. 
you have your church teachings on this particular topic perfect if you believe in that go ahead but if you see another brother who is believing in pre millennium then you have to be very careful if i don't love my brother who has a different view i am in trouble that's what i said earlier sometimes we fight with other believers as if we are enemies he is from that organization and she is from that church and i am from different that's what the non christians are saying cursing us you christians you hold on to some doctrines and you say that i am this group and that group i believe this and that and outward dress our uh, the way in which we worship everything is different but we don't love one another we are not a balanced christian not at all not at all and organization like uesi talks about interdenominational stand means we respect one another we love one another and we hold on to our basic christian truths think about it one more thought i want to leave because i have to go a long way using our mind and feelings there should be a balance there balanced christian will uh, love god both in 100% mind and both 100% heart in my feeling perfect and using my mind perfect sometimes we can think that i'm uh, 100% in mind i'm going to think about it last week when we looked at the topic on finding god's will god will reveal his will to you this is god's pleasing and you have a responsibility to use your common sense that's what we saw one of the points as common sense there should be a balance if i go to the extreme in saying that common sense is important and guidance from the scriptures and uh, uh, counsel from godly people is not important i am in trouble i cannot go to the other extreme i'll go to this prophetess or uh, to that prophet she will pray and he will pray and find out god's will for me whom to marry and whom to not to marry oh no dangerous position dangerous position so we need to have a real balance in terms of our mind and feeling we can go ahead with uh, we can uh, think of various topics like that in balanced views in fact somewhere i saw this uh, thing there are different streams in christian understanding some people give more importance to prayer uh, and meditation and contemplative they give more time for uh, meditation and some people talk much about holiness they are away from other people and they are talking only about holiness and some we have already seen charismatic they give more importance to experiences and others they talk about social justice they give an example of uh, good samaritan those three people levi and uh, others they just left and went away but here is a man who committed for social justice who is concerned about uh, compassion filled man so we have to be like that don't talk much about going to church and uh, doing all sorts of things you love people and uh, uh, show christ love like Ma, um, mother teresa and fifth category most of us come under that evangelicals we are god word center we are evangelicals we believe in god's word we are evangelistic because we believe the gospel will transform lives and another group they are more of uh, outward uh, sacraments they are very rituals if they can do all rituals they are happy with that my point here is who is right and who is wrong we are evangelicals also have to be very careful yesterday uh, some of us attended uh, that uh, wonderful program organized by uesi about um, uh, professor enoch one of the founding fathers his uh, lifestyle and his beliefs and one of the points very clearly came out in the context of liberal theology this man stood away liberal theologians were christians and they were telling that god's word is there but professor enoch was could talk very clearly 
we are evangelicals we believe that this is god's word this is god's word perfect at the same time how we are going to understand others i'm not saying i'm not saying that you become a liberal i am not saying that you be critical uh, don't be critical about others belief but you need to have a right understanding how you are going to behave with one another from different streams uh, they are coming from i have taken quite a lot of time but i feel this this is important what you believe is very important if you are a balanced christian in that if you can balance it properly definitely you can your behavior will be balanced one let me start with personal life our personal devotional life is very important give time for god and give time with god being with god is very important many times we are very active but we don't give importance to our personal devotional life many young people do this mistake i have suffered a lot as a, a minister of god i wanted to do many many things for god but i am not spending time with god very dangerous position balanced personality triad another aspect i am considering in your personal life you are an extrovert and you do not know how to balance your other areas of life otherwise you are an introvert you cannot share the gospel you cannot go forward but you need to be a balanced person that's a different topic altogether your personality trait is real you have to be real at the same time you need to understand how to balance your personal uh, personal life personal enjoyment i am not telling in a wrong way i am telling in a right uh, in a uh, positive note i am saying how is your entertainment entertainment do you enjoy your personal life walk with uh, personal just walking watching a ipl match or watching a very good uh, football match oh no we cannot talk about it personal enjoyment means how you enjoy or balance your entertaining time some of us are spending too much time in video games we are addicted to that that's what we saw that we are not balancing and one more thought i want to leave with you on personal development we are enjoying our life but how much i am balancing with my present and future i am talking to young people my young friends you need to balance properly some of you are very much conscious of your uh, future development but you are not enjoying your present and some of you are least bother about uh, your personality development reading extras hearing from others like that second one you know family life it's a big challenge but more than the quantity of time quality of time is very important we need to really balance how you are going to give time quality time as you are sitting and eating together make it a point that's a very quality time you are giving watching the tv and then eating together and speaking with your parents or speaking with your siblings not a good idea you are not giving your quality time especially parents they do the mistake uh, multi uh, functional and they do many things and along with eating they think that they are giving time for the children but that's not a very good idea quality time is very important we need to find out how best we can give a quality time even if it is 10 minutes sometimes as a grandfather i want to give a very quality time to my grandson i won't think of anything by the study or my preparations and things like that 10 minutes i'm going to play with him 100% i want to concentrate in my game of course uh, in my age we can do that but when you are young you have many things to do but give quality time for your family and especially husband and wife very big challenge and uh, wrong priorities partiality these are all tremendous weaknesses for imbalanced christian families and love towards extended family is also important i love my parents i love my children i love my siblings but what about my cousins what about what about my extended family members i'm very imbalanced think of it think of it and definitely balancing time with family and ministry is very important i'm bringing a quotation from dr abdul kalam uh, it's a very familiar quotation already you might have seen it 
the center part is very important. When there is harmony in the home, there is order in the nation. So as a Christian, as a believer, as a leader of a Christian ministry, you need to take note of it. If there is a harmony in home, there is an order in nation. That's what it says. That means uh, uh, we need to give importance to family life. As a servant of God, if I miss my family life, I'm in trouble. As a child of God, as a EU student, as a graduate, as a very good church member, if you're not giving importance to your family life, you are in trouble. Be careful. Social life. Time for others, we say, but how much we give quality time for with others. Even when they are speaking, immediately we, our mind goes off with various other things and we wanted to uh, speak, uh, uh, answer them only. We are not interested in listening. That means our uh, social life is not good. And being partial, if he's smart, if she's beautiful, and if he's rich, then I give more time. And others, we, we easily we can see that uh, I am partial before others. Very dangerous, very dangerous. I'm not a balanced uh, Christian. And uh, I want to minister to others. I'm not mutually encouraged. I, I'm, I'm becoming like a big brother, big brother attitude. Holier than thou. Uh, I'm more holier than you. That type of an attitude. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Be a balanced Christian. And social media, another important factor. You have to take time to look at that. Uh, we need to be in social media, but at the same time, we should not uh, waste our time in social media. We need to involve in the ministry and through social media, but we should not be just carried away by social media. Be balanced, be balanced. In the ministry, I want to take a little extra time because as you're all involving, you need to understand that we need to be a balanced Christian. Evangelism, discipleship, leadership, missions, everything is important. You may say that I'm excellent in evangelism, but don't stop there. You have to disciple, you have to make people disciple. And you need to be concerned about developing leaders. There should be a balance. You may be an expert. That's what uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, Joel read the passage for us. You may be gifted in one thing. Good. The fourth point says like this, using your different gifts of the spirit. Perfect. At the same time, be a balanced Christian minister. I and you have to be very careful. Appreciate if there are, you, you may not be good in evangelism. If somebody is doing, appreciate that basic thing. Second one, historian, value teacher, and visionary. Somebody will be talking about past history. What has happened to the church? What has happened to the ministry? They talk only about the history. Very good in that. And others, they talk about the present values, core values of this movement, and many of the values we are talking about. And some of our friends will talk about five years later, 10 years later, what's going to happen. But there should be a balance. There should be a balance. And third one, personal work, excellent in personal work. And some of us are excellent in taking GBS, group Bible studies, small groups, small self, we are excellent. And some of us are excellent in handling large meetings. If it is a camp, if it's a conference, if it is a convention, we can handle it. But appreciate one another and be a balanced person. You may not be excellent in standing before a big gathering and speaking, fine. But if somebody is going to do it and appreciate that and being a balanced Christian, look at it. And using the different gifts is very, very important in the church. That's what we have seen in Ephesians 4th chapter. I very well uh, want to connect it with Ephesians, this whole uh, topic, balanced Christian. We need to have a right understanding of the doctrines. We need to have a right understanding of our behaviors and our church life. Worship and witness should go together. Very, very important. Uh, we worship the Lord. At the same time, the church should be a witness. Being a member is very important. And if God wants, we have to be being active, be in the choir, be taking the Sunday school, be in the youth group, 
very important. If God wants you to be in a position, be there. And we need to connect our church with the world. World means the society around. Being an influential person, easily you can represent your church in your congregate in your society. Same thing, you have to protect your church from the influence of the world. You are a good person to do that. Be a balanced person. Be a bridge between your church and missions. There are ministries around and be a balanced person to give importance to the church and also to the ministry. And you are the right person to bridge them. A balanced Christian is a very good uh, position to bridge between church and ministry. And last point, engaging all age groups in the church. I'm interested with young people. Don't stop there. Concern about children and concern about uh, young people and everybody being a balanced person. We need to see the church is growing in a proper way. God bless you. I'm sure that you have some questions. You are going to make some observations. Over to Vinci. Thank you so much, Ankri. Thank you for the beautiful study. So this is a time to discuss or put in your opinions. Over to you all. If any of you want to share something or share your opinions, you can do it now. Okay, so uh, if there are no, no questions uh, to be asked, uh, Nancy has something to share. I give a few minutes. Joshua, na? Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, another very wonderful Bible study. Glenn, and you're always blessed with this one. So like, like you were talking about like how uh, Dr. Enoch and all and during his time. So, but like we are pretty much living that kind of thing through your teachings, like what they lived that time. So we think it's amazed to be part of this kind of like historic setting where we are, we are so blessed to hear billions of messages and Bible studies week after week. So it's really a big blessing. So I just wanted to say. And one more thing, like you're talking about using our mind and feelings. So that was really, and uh, this, uh, one of the things is like, uh, main many times in different EU meetings, like we stressed upon uh, quiet time. And I've also seen like in other, other organizations, uh, they criticize, like I've seen where they criticize um, EU for that, for like giving so much emphasis. But I think like this is like so important that uh, quiet time with God and you had shared, shared, shared about being with God. So that was something new. So like, you always talk, think about talking about talking to God, but being with God is like something really, yeah. So that really hit the home run for me. So uh, very blessed with him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, over to Nancy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll take a few minutes uh, just uh, for a self-evaluation uh, thing. I request everyone to self-evaluate yourself. Uh, I don't want your answers, but answer yourself for the questions that I ask now. Okay, the first question is, how involved are you with your family? The next question, do you spend at least an hour for God? And the next one, how well are you concerned about your health? And the next, have you been practicing reorganization of thoughts every time when it's needed? And the next one, is your ministry effectively impacting on others? And the final one is, is your life Christ-centered? So these are the questions that each of us have to evaluate ourselves with. So thank you for the time. I request you all to focus on this and improvise our life in Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy, for those uh, thought-provoking questions. I hope uh, you all have ev evaluated. Mm, so uh, we would like to uh, say and 
ask a few suggestions now. As Billy Uncle already mentioned, next week is our last uh, week for this series, that is uh, series two. So if you are uh, willing to have a third series or uh, if you wish to um, continue the study, Bible study, you can uh, give us uh, your suggestions, be it uh, book study or character study or anything uh, that's, that is creative and innovative, you can uh, put it in the WhatsApp group or text any of us or text uncle personally and give us your suggestions. Um, as we all know, all of us are busy, all of, uh, are, all of us are busy because the lockdown is almost over and back to work and all. So if the third series, third series is going to be continued, what uh, will the pattern be or how can we take it? So that's our uh, question and you can all uh, give us your suggestions. You can post it in the group or text uncle personally. Also, uh, next week being the last week, we would like you to volunteer to do the opening prayer or Bible reading or lead the worship. If any of you are interested, we'll be really happy to have you in the study. Uh, I see that all of you have, uh, have contributed in one or the other way throughout this series, the second series. So thank you so much for your participation. Uh, so next week, uh, we have three days. That's the last uh, week for the second series. So if any of you are willing, you can all volunteer and you can text Westlin or Nancy or uh, myself or Billy Uncle and uh, give us your suggestions too. So that's all from our side. Billy Uncle, do you have something to say? That's right. Thank you, uh, Nancy. For that wonderful questions. Thank you, Vincy and uh, Miss Lynn. Uh, balanced Christian. We'll go back to the topic. If they have any experiences or if they have any uh, comments to make, it will be very good. We have some more time. But I appreciate your sharings. Good evening, Uncle. Uh, good evening, Lavinia. Balancing in all areas, uh, maybe it's difficult. Uh, but uh, we'll get through practice. Hmm. I already uh, shared on Monday. Ideal uh, is not possible. Perfect hmm. is very much possible. So that's the way I look at it. When I was a state secretary, there I got that idea. I cannot be an ideal state secretary. Not at all. But I have written who is an ideal state secretary. And then I was quite quite often checking. Am I going closer to the idea? So like that, uh, uh, in every area of our life, we cannot have an ideal balanced life, but very much possible who is an ideal uh, Christian, so who is a balanced Christian, ideally a model. As you said rightly, uh, it may not be possible, but very much we have to go towards it. And by practicing, that will be very helpful. You are right. Practice makes a man perfect. Yes, man and woman. <laughs> if we spend more time in prayer also, other people think uh, <laughs> negative way. And also, uh, we spend whatever we do uh, away from the people, they feel very bad. <laughs> uh, so that we need to exercise in the right way. <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Uncle, for today's Bible study. Nice. Thank you. Mm. Now, being a woman, that's what I want to tell you. By morning, 7 o'clock, you get up and 8 o'clock from 7 to 9 o'clock, you are taking quiet time and you are not helping your mother and you are not uh, making the breakfast. Then your spirituality is a questionable one. <laughs> uh, th that means you are not balancing your time. Not only you. Uh, anybody for that matter. That's what I'm saying. So we need to be very careful. Our spirituality in terms of prayer and meditation should not hinder others when they are expecting you to do something in action. Preparing the breakfast is a time to do that. And uh, even some of the boys have to help in the kitchen during that time. So they cannot simply say that, mommy, I'm taking quiet time. I will not come. That's not a good spirituality as such. <laughs> 
uh, just a small observation I'm making, but you are, you, you are very right in saying that. <laughs> Any other suggestions or questions? Hey, you millionaire you talked about balancing uh, church ministry and you know so like when when I was uh, like he, that is always a hard one like you know so to juggle I mean not juggle but like it is a when I was a EU student like uh, we had an emphasis that we should be uh, both the EU and this one we should give equally so that was pretty tough but like I think like it depends upon everybody how they view it or like how it's for their lives, but uh, yeah, so but it's a very, very important point that you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, it's not very easy, but it's not difficult also. A good example is uh, our leader, Binsi. She's very active in the church. At the same time, she's very active in EU. And uh, she has a gift of balancing time. And uh, she's very good with the pastor. And also she's very good with the staff worker. And uh, so there are some people who can balance, uh, uh, as you said, the Joshua, the situation matters, the place in which we live and uh, the understanding of the pastors and our attitude also. Like if you give more importance saying that I am a great leader, then you are in trouble. And then uh, if you are saying that you are bad and our group is better, then we are in trouble. So in that way, our attitude, our motives also matters a lot in terms of our relationship with the churches. And uh, many a times I see that um, people like us, we think that we are in a great ministry and church ministries, that's nothing. And those people are very lethargic and we call them as nominal Christians and we are evangelical Christians. That is not the right way to look at. If we have that attitude, we may not be in a position to have a balanced view on church ministry, number one. Number two, many times we as evangelicals, we think that we go to church where I can preach or where I can go on dictate terms. That is only for ministry, I can go to church. That is also not a very uh, good attitude. I want to be ministered. That's what I mentioned, mutually encouraged. When I go to church, I want to be mutually encouraged. Though the church service may not be equal to the EU meeting or uh, any other spiritual meetings. But even there, I need to have an attitude to be mutually strengthened. I need to appreciate. Um, but uh, the situations will tell us. In some places, I see that uh, after involvement in the church, they make you to be the president of the committee and they make you very important person in the church so that you will not go to any organization or any meeting then you have to be very careful. Your calling, your visions, your vision statement, your mission, and your values should uh, communicate. Pastor, I respect uh, your feeling. You can give me uh, responsibilities, but thank you. I'll be very much uh, there to help you, but not in this position. Some pastors, they like to do that. If they will make Bincy as a choir master finished, she will not go to you meeting at all. She'll be held up every day in the church. So some pastors wanted to do like that. So we have to be very careful. Our calling and our commitment, we have to communicate. <laughs> yes, so to the EU, we face that uh, difficulty, Uncle, balancing all, all, all of us when the church uh, choir also, and uh, we had to practice with the uh, EU program at the same time. So initially it was very difficult to balance, but then, um, by God's grace, we all learned how to balance both. <laughs> Smaller places, it may be possible. You know, larger places, because many people are involved. Places like uh, uh, Nagpur or Hyderabad, they're all uh, centers where people are coming from different backgrounds and busy situations. And everybody will be demanding the time from the pastor. And the challenge will be there. But God alone can help us to be a balanced Christian in terms of giving time for the ministry, at the same time, giving time for the church. Yeah, so, Lavanya. Uh, actually, I forwarded the uh, Baru character study to my our pastor, Anna. He felt happy in the Ephesians 5.22, a couple uh, um, 
that message is pdf also i forwarded to anna uh, uh, i first i uh, thought very fear but uh, they felt happy and uh, now whatever the uh, important things are there he will um, send to me means for praying <laughs> very good very good very good model <laughs> yeah thank you everyone for your sharing and um, comments so i think uh, we'll end today's session i ask uh, westland to pray and close today's session over to westland i'm ready to you see yes west pray dear loving heavenly father we thank you lord thank you for this laid on we want to thank you for being with us throughout this bible study lord Lord, thank you for the presence, Lord, being in the place from the starting to the end, Lord. Lord, Lord, help us to practice in our life what we discuss here and learn what we learn here, Lord. Lord, help us to make a difference in the world for glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Thank you, sir, so much, Westland, and thank you, everyone, for meet you all next week.